This is Bobby Karin with Excess Rock. You're listening to the Excess Rock Podcast. The band Knights or Ebb have been on tour through most of 2019, and I recently had the chance to catch up with Bon Harris before one of their shows. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Bon as much as I enjoyed talking to him. All right, so tell me a little bit about uh, this current tour. How's it been so far? Uh, the shows have been amazing. You know, every single one has been really well attended. Uh, response has been fantastic. Um, it was a little bit of a sort of an experiment for Dub and I because um, David and Simon, uh, two of the founder members and um, members of the project Stark, were supposed to come with us. We'd, we'd, we'd done some warm up shows last year as a four piece. I see. And that was working quite nicely. And we had a few uh, bureaucratic issues with that one so it's actually the first time Doug and I have played as a two-piece I see so um, that was a bit new but you know we have been the core of the band for a long time sure. and, and, and that's what you know a lot of people recognize that so people seem to be perfectly happy with it yeah. being that way so I, mean, I you think know. of you two guys as, yeah yeah as nights are out yeah yeah, it's just like in terms of being on stage, you know, some just some extra stuff sure. for a performance can be nice. But we're managing to pull it off with the two of us, and everyone's going home happy. So so far, so good. Nice. Yeah. So, what are your favorite tracks to play live? Ooh, um, getting close is always a fun one because you know it's kind of punk rock, and we both get to dance and sing and all that. <laughs> Murderous is always great because it's just like you know such a such a sort of iconic track for a lot of people um so those are favorites um and then on different nights different ones depending on the crowd and the venue so you know i like some of the kind of funkier ones mid-tempo yeah. ones so always just to groove a bit yeah so that brings me to my next question are, are you changing the set list much on this tour or are you kind of sticking to a free um, format since there's just yeah, we, we, will, you? we we will change it i mean because there's so many new things and new variables introduced, we've kind of kept to what we know for now. And also, a little bit of that comes down to the amount of time to, you know, we have to, if it's, especially if it's older songs we haven't played for a long time, you know, we've got to just run through them. Sure. At this point, you know, Doug works in Blackline, Nights are Air, he works with Terence, there's a lot of different lyrics yeah. to remember, so he has to sort of refresh his memory on those. So. So throughout 2019, we will vary it more, but but for the most part here, you know, it's been working, so we've been going with it. Nice. So Nights Are Ebb's last full-length album of new material was in 2010. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that was 15 years after a big hit, so there's kind yeah. of a, a space there, is. there, and and again, we've got a little bit of a space there. Mm-hmm. Can we expect any new music as far as a studio album out of Nights Are Ebb? Uh, at the moment, we're, we're quite happy. Like Some of the format and some of the idea of bringing David and Simon in was to be able to eventually start to improvise a little more with the tracks and do different versions of the tracks. We didn't want to do too much of that too soon because, you know, people have got favourites and we want to don't want to mess with them too much and we'll probably pick selected tracks to do extended versions or reworks but i think for now we've got so much material and, and some of the tracks on later albums are so layered you could do easily do three or four different sure. versions of the track with, with what's in there so i think we're more interested in that and and in terms of releasing new music we're tending to focus more on black line mm-hmm. you know and other projects that we're working on to uh, to explore the musical changes, I think uh, I think there's enough material to work with um, <clears throat> with all the back catalogue of the Ebb stuff that we've got. So you know, and and once you get into that recording the album, it's studio time. You know, we wanted to try and come back and do this Ebb thing this time without it get, getting too immersive. You know, without it taking over everything. Sure. As soon as you commit to a record, then there's a lot more that goes into that process I'm sure so yeah and I think in previous times where we've come back the project tends to take on a life of its own and run away with itself so we're very very cognizant this time of trying to just keep it so that it's fun there's you know we go and enjoy it I mean this run's been fairly immersive but throughout the summer the shows will be spread out more just try to keep it so it's enjoyable and it yeah. doesn't become full time with the labor Wrong. of love and not right. not uh, yeah. not too uh, too much of a job. Exactly. It sounds like exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So tell me a little bit about, you know, prior to starting Nights Around, you guys were kind of young when you started. Yeah. Did you have any kind of formal music background? Any no. kind of? None at all. No. Um, you know, um, about the closest it would come is that we like dancing, you know, so I think we had sort of quite a, an acute awareness of a rhythm and, uh, and what makes a dance floor move, but you know, no, no formal music training at all. Gotcha. So, for you, and I'm, I'm sure I probably know the answer based off of our <laughs> discussion that we're yeah. having now, but which do you really prefer? Do you like writing new songs and being in the studio, or do you like that energy of playing in front of a live audience? Um, they're both good in their place, you know. It's, it's like there's days where you feel creative and you feel like you've got music in you or, or ideas just come out, mm -hmm. and uh, that's always a good feeling. But really, you don't feel like... The things have been really proven or, sure. or finalised until they've been in front of an audience mm -hmm. and, uh, and work that out. Feedback. Yeah, it's sort of like their baptism of fire, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean? right. So, uh, so that they're, they're they're both good and and normally the rule is once you've been doing one for a little while, you wish you were doing the other, <laughs> you know. So sure. It's, yeah, if you can keep a balance between the two, then great. You know? gotcha. So, what's the strangest request that you've ever received from one of your fans? Oof, wow. I don't know yeah. what ones are publishable, really. <laughs> well, that you can, that you can tell. <laughs> um, that's, that's a really good question. Um, can't think off the top of my head. Nothing too unusual stands out, huh? Well, there's been some unusual things. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. nothing, nothing you want to incriminate no, anybody with? No. <laughs> And unfortunately, my mind's gone down that rabbit hole now, and I can't seem to pull it out to something more innocent. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, back, like I said, when you guys started back in 82, you were pretty young. Yeah. So, were your parents supportive of your oh, aspirations to do this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when Doug and I first set our sights on, on getting a synthesizer called the SH-101, um, we, we stayed in and saved up a bunch of money and, and, and Doug's dad actually contributed some money oh, okay. towards it to help us get going. Nice. I think he said whatever we managed to save he would match. Yeah. You know, so I think in the end we managed to save enough for the synth and he bought our amplifier, um, something like that. And then in the early days we actually used to rehearse at my parents' house. So every Saturday my parents would take the dog for an extended walk and we would move all the couches from one end of the living room and just clear that oh, space God. set up the drums and back then we had pieces of metal that we played so sure. it sort of looked a bit like an industrial <laughs> junk yard and it was loud you know so my neighbors didn't didn't have a good time with it but every saturday they were like yeah probably around noon we would set up you yeah. know go out rehearse till like three so it sounds like both of your parents were heavily involved in, in that yeah. process of you guys getting very off the supportive ground. you know i mean little rumblings at certain points where where we were intent on doing it but maybe you know on unemployment or what have you and there are a few like when are you going to get a real job etc sure. etc et but i think they could see that we were super committed and 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 that we were going to try and see it through and i think they did everything they could to to, to help us do that so which bands or artists inspired you to perform originally? I mean, who were you into? Well, you know, um, sort of from going to see live bands and, you know, we like Nick Cave, Killing Joe, Birthday Party. Love Killing you know, Joe. Yeah, I mean, such... So, you guys have worked with Jazz Coleman on we some have, stuff too, We right? have, in the studio, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, seeing bands like, we were lucky enough to see the Birthday Party, you know. Oh, and, nice. And just the energy and craziness of that band you know sort of that really cemented our ideas about live performance and, and how we'd like to do it you know um so yeah a lot of those a lot of those sort of post-punk mm -hmm. type bands so what do you think of the, the current music scene that's out there um i think because there's so much music now mm -hmm. um it's always going to be a mixed review Sure. So I think you know you do see some really outstanding and interesting things coming out, but because of the nature of the market, marketing, commercialization, you get a lot of Me Too music or, or music that uh, you know 
very sounds very similar across a lot of areas and I think you're also as an older musician it's brilliant that a younger generation are picking up on some earlier influences yeah but and we, we were guilty of this as well I mean like we were big fans of DAF and we you know in the early days you, you don't have much nuance or anything else so you tend to sound very much like them so you know I'll hear bands that obviously have got a huge Joy Division record collection and, <laughs> and you sort of like it's great it is new but for me it's so close sure. to what went before I don't I don't need it again but but it's great that if that band finds an audience so yeah um, yeah and just you know how easy it is to make electronic music now that can lead to some lazy practices sure. <laughs> from some people but you know for every three or four bands that maybe you don't respond to you find one that you think's amazing so you know I think it's interesting you're talking about the younger fans and stuff I've got my son he's next door at the cafe but yeah. he's 17 so this is going to be his first oh, awesome. kind of a, you know electronic cool uh, industrial type show yeah. yeah he's he's kind of you know grew up like most kids right now in the U.S. that are hip hop fans for yeah. the most part. Okay. Um, but you know, he's been—I've been playing him stuff and getting him kind of introduced to it. So yeah. he's kind of excited to come out tonight cool. and check this out. Awesome. So awesome. We got to see some YouTube videos and so forth. Right. Um, she, I don't know if you can picture this. I know you do a lot of production work. Mm. Um, but if you weren't performing in a band, what kind of career do you think you would have? Um, if I got to choose, I would be an animator. I've always been interested in animation and because I do a lot of the synth stuff and, yeah. and programming. It's, you know, like doing synth sounds on a modular synth, you're, you're splitting the sound down into microscopic slices of time. Sure. And you do exactly the same thing with animation. It's like cells. Very, yeah, yeah animation very, cells. very similar. You know, like you, in animation, you look at movement that looks smooth and you break it down 24 frames a second, you know. Um, so I've always loved that, and lately I've been working on some of my own animation programs. Oh, that's cool. Um, or animation uh, projects, sorry. Um, writing, always, you know, Doug and I have always been keen readers and writers. Um, and probably in my younger years, I would have said a dancer, but I think the ship may have sailed on that one. It's a little harder the older you get. I, I do what I can on stage, but I don't, I don't think anyone's going to be hiring me these days. <laughs> So what do you consider your greatest accomplishment so far? I think making a difference to people's lives when they were in a tough spot or in some difficulty, you know. It seems recently particularly I've had quite a few gay people come up to me and say that like they found our music, you know, when they were discovering themselves or coming out, mm -hmm. our, our music, not necessarily, they never found it necessarily ag aggressive or angry, mm -hmm. they found it defiant. And, and, and uplifting and uh, that was more what we meant it meant it to be yeah, cool. um, and I think anything like that where where you maybe have people that feel isolated or marginalized if our music's given them hope and strength uh, I would consider that to be a great achievement oh, very cool yeah um, so I was gonna go back up here I had a little bit that kind of covers you in dust but yeah um, early on, I sort of felt like the, the music and the lyrics both kind of were left open to interpretation. Yes. Uh, kind of the same way visual art is represented sometimes. Yeah. Uh, kind of yeah. dependent on the, the independent for the viewer and the listener to decide. Yeah. Um, but later on, it seems like maybe Doug's kind of turned in a little bit more of a storyteller, although mm -hmm. it's still kind of open. Yeah. So it, it sort of feels like you guys, obviously, you've, the sound has evolved over the albums, like, you know. Yeah. You still have your unique sound, but it yeah. definitely has changed. Yeah. Um, what do you think uh, uh, your image conveys of your music? To? If you had to put a visual to it, what, what kind of image do you, do you think it conveys? I think um, I think the storytelling angle is is a good one. You know, it's you know that's something I've always identified with, and again, it goes back to that thing of Doug and I both being interested in writers. You sure. know, so. Yeah, just like little vignettes of life or little snapshots. You know, normally it's uh, there's a darker side to it, but I also think it's more like um, like an inner dialogue or inner questioning or, or, or self self uh, examination a lot of the time. Yeah, I've had other people say that where you know, yes, like you said, there's a dark side to it, but then 
it's also kind of cathartic in a way. Yes. And, you know, the, the music, it kind of helps you get in touch with some of those feelings that maybe you have and, and, and do it in a way that's, you know, actually productive. Yeah, and I think in a lot of ways, you know, Sam, Sam what I said about, you know, what would be the greatest achievement of the music, well, a lot of it is, is kind of fairly honest examining of our failings as well or our doubts or our anxieties sure. and I think for a lot of people that's like yeah me too you know that's yeah. that's a way of speaking to people is like yeah we all have these yeah I always these, thought you know I've been a fan since that total age and, yeah and yeah it always kind of spoke to me like that too and right. you know everybody has those feelings I guess of isolation yeah. or or not sure about things and you know trying to make your way through the world any thinking and, person does for yeah, sure, you know, for sure. Because, not everyone i guess yeah, but yeah yeah, yeah you if you're it. introspective at all you do yes. yeah and if you if you're any, in any way observant or questioning or inquisitive about the world you're, you're you know and not only that your place in it you know like all of us have sort of aspirations and dreams of things that we would like to do and would like to be and of course you have all those questions you know how am i going to get there is it good sure. you know all these you know am i going to be able to maintain it if i do get there everyone has has these you know yeah. these I issues thought that made it very relatable yeah, yeah. you know because yeah. of that because it's, it's something like you, you say sometimes to. in a really weird and abstract way where it's yeah. like i think maybe sometimes people can interpret it how they want to sure. and apply it how they want to like you say like a good piece of art um, but yeah, but later on, then obviously much more personal and direct. But, but yeah, I think uh, yeah, just honesty, really, just bearing your souls. So for anybody that doesn't know you personally, what would they be surprised to know about you? Uh, they'd probably be fr- from if they'd only ever seen us on stage, they'd probably be surprised about how easygoing and humorous we are. It's like we appear very serious, and, and we do take the music very seriously, and generally the lyrics. Are about serious things, but um, but we are actually, you know, we do enjoy life, and we are happy people, and we are happy when other people are happy. We don't <laughs> like to see suffering or, you know, dark sure. stuff. And again, there's a lot of that in the music is about like resistance or defiance or some not revolution exactly, but yeah. you know, some form of rebellion. If you if you don't think you're being treated fairly, so. You know, and I think a lot of that does come from a, a genuine enjoyment of life and a, and a love of freedom. Um, so I guess this would be my last question for yeah, you. I think Daniel's about to start okay. as well, so we won't be able to hear anything. Is there anything that you would like to say to your fans? Mainly, thanks for all the amazing support. I mean, for us to be able to come back, you know, we've been doing this 35 years now, Absolutely. you know, playing shows, and to have such long gaps between them and still have people keen and you know the amount of energy and love really that that we get at each of these shows is amazing so you know my main my main feeling thing i'd like to say is thanks and and express my gratitude for the support visit us at excessrock.com for all the latest rock hard rock and metal news